Hello and welcome back to Sammy's DIY Workshop. Last week, a good friend of ours had asked if I could build her this modern Danish inspired shelf. And this is the inspiration photo she had sent us. As soon as I saw the shelf, I knew exactly why she wanted it and I was super excited to build it. Follow along to see the complete process of how I built this shelf with just a few tools in just a few hours and see us fly to New York City to hand deliver and install it. We quickly headed to Home Depot to grab some supplies, starting with the wood for the shelf. When picking out wood for any project, you want to make sure it's straight. I wanted to make sure these boards were perfect so that the shelf would be level. To do this, you simply place one end of the board on the floor, close one eye, and look down to see if there's a curve in the wood or not. After I found a few boards that were straight, I loaded them up in the cart. Next, we were on the hunt for the perfect stain. I know I wanted something rich, but I wasn't sure if I wanted the exact stain that was in the photo. All right, so I'm getting two things. One, a pre-stain because I'm staining pine. When you stain pine, it goes on really sloshy, so wood conditioner is really gonna help prime the wood so the stain goes on smoother. We're also gonna get a gel stain because unlike a water-based wood stain, this covers up imperfections and goes on really smooth. So. Next, I headed over to grab some wood plugs to fill the screw holes. As you can see, Molino loves coming to Home Depot, except when we run into some scary Halloween decorations. So we just got back from Home Depot. I purchased some pine boards, a one by four, a one by six. They're both six feet long. I also got some gel stain and some pre-stain. Both of those are very important because pine board does not usually stain very well. It's really splotchy. So the pre-stain is going to help with that as well as the gel stain. I got some polyurethane sealer and a high gloss because I want this to be glossy in the end. The other tools you will need for this are a drill, a router if you'd like some smooth edges, and I'm using a miter saw. Other things you'll need to put it together are some wood glue. I'm using a Craig jig to drill holes and screw it together. And then I also purchased some plugs just for a more seamless look. So yeah, we're gonna jump in. First, I'm gonna start cutting the three shelves. Before I do that, a quick tip, whenever you're working with uh, new planks of wood, you always wanna make sure to cut off that raw edge. One, it gives you a straight edge and a nice clean cut. So we're gonna start off by doing that and then measure. Now that I've cut that clean edge, I know that my end is nice and straight. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure. We have three shelves and each one is gonna be two feet long. All right, I have my three shelves cut. Now I'm gonna cut the edges. I'm gonna make each of those 30 inches. So I'm gonna measure those and cut those with my miter saw. Next up, I'm gonna be routing the edges. I am using a 1 8 inch round over bit and I'm just using my Ryobi router. When I route, I like to use clamps so that I know my piece is secure while I'm routing. So I'm gonna go ahead and clamp these down.
have all of my edges routed. They're nice and rounded. I have one more step before I go in and stain them. I forgot to mention that I'm going to be using my orbital sander. You can hand sand these, but it will just take a little bit more time. I find it easier and quicker to use my electric sander. I'm going in with 220 grit sandpaper to smooth over the edges and any frayed wood that I have left over from the router. sanded and routed I'm gonna go ahead and drill the holes in the three shelves before I stain everything to do that I'm gonna use my Craig jig so the shelves will sit like this these screw holes will be underneath and hidden from when you're looking at the face of the shelf so to do that they do have clamp Craig jigs which are very useful this one you just set on the piece of wood that you're wanting your holes screwed in I use a clamp to clamp it down and then you'll basically have screw holes that are slanted so they can be hidden. assemble the shelf before steaming it. I think it'll just be easier in the end. So I'm going to measure where I'd like my shelves and then we're going to drill it together. I'm going to use screws and wood glue to put it together. When you use a Craig jig, you always have to use the Craig jig screws. I'm using the one and a quarter inch. So I'm going to put some glue on the side and then we'll screw it together. like where you stored a level then you yeah. would notice but. or like a cup with liquid in it yeah but. the 
shelf built, but we're left with these open holes. They are on the underneath, so not that noticeable, but we're gonna plug them. So these are the plugs that I uh, got at Home Depot. I am gonna put some glue in, and then these will go in just like that. Glue will dry, and we'll sand it. Here, I'm placing some glue in each of the holes and then sliding the plugs in as far as they'll go. So now that we have all the plugs in place, I let them sit. The glue is hopefully dry and I'm gonna go in and sand it. I'm gonna start with 100 grit sandpaper and see how much that takes it down and hopefully it takes enough down we can start moving up in sandpaper back to the 220 before we put some stain on it. grit sandpaper and finishing it off with a 220. The reason I'm gradually going up to a 220 is because if you skip too many grits you might end up with little swirls or scratches on your wood that you likely won't notice until you have stain on it. I've got everything sanded and we're ready to stain. Before we're staining though we're going in with pre-stain and this is gonna go on and sit for 30 minutes. You can apply this with a brush or you can use a rag. I'm just gonna be using an old cut up t-shirt. I have my gloves. And to start, you always wanna swirl these. You don't wanna shake them. If you shake them, it can create a lot of bubbles. That's not what we want. definitely recommend wearing your mask when you're using a pre-stain. I didn't realize how many fumes this product had until I started applying it and I quickly got my mask on. for about 30 minutes and now we're going to apply our stain. We're using a gel stain for a couple of reasons. This is pine, it doesn't accept stain very well and if I were to use like a water-based stain it would be very light whereas a gel stain is going to give us a really deep rich color and that's what I'm going for. gel left over and it just gives it a seamless look. I let 
this sit and dry overnight. I think I'm going to go in with another coat because I just don't like the tone of it. I want it to be a little bit richer of a color. So we're going to go in one more coat, let this dry, and then put the top coat on. sit for about two hours now. It's nice and dry and time for a top coat. So I'm going in with the polyurethane water-based um, gloss top coat. This is a fast drying. I want to get two coats on this and hopefully within about an hour, hour and a half. So I'm using my brush to apply this, get a nice even coat over the whole piece, let that dry and then we'll do one more coat. I've let that top coat sit for about an hour. It's dry to the touch. We're ready for a second coat. Before we do that though, I'm going to go in with some 220 grit sandpaper just to go over the surface and smooth any brush strokes out. So that meant it was time to get this thing packaged and ready to go. We decided that we were going to ship it as a piece of luggage, so we needed to make sure that this thing was packaged nice and tightly. It was a very awkward shape, but with lots of bubble wrap and tape, it was very secure. It was finally time. We loaded everything up into the truck and then we headed to the airport. The following morning, we went to one of my favorite coffee shops in New York to get some iced coffee and of course a chocolate croissant. We did a little bit of city exploring and we had the chance to catch the US Open while we were there. If you're a tennis lover, just like us, then this is an experience that you won't want to miss. After having some fun in the city, it was time to get back to work and get this shelf up. I started off by measuring and marking the wall where I wanted the shelf to go. I then anchored screws on either side for the shelf to hang on. I had found some hanging brackets at a hardware store and attached those to the back of the shelf. And then it was time to see if I measured correctly. I used my phone level to make sure that it was in fact level, it passed the test, and I was able to sleep at night. Here is a quick comparison before we reveal the finished look. I 
I love creating projects like this, and if you guys enjoy watching it, leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think, and hopefully we'll see more videos like this in the future. As for now, I'll catch you guys next week. Thank you.